50th episode. I uh, can't believe I have reached 50 episodes. Everyone's told me that, you know, it's uh, been a bit of a ride. I think for myself, it's been a great distraction from the world that we've had in the past couple of months. I think this was an idea way before the pandemic and then during the pandemic, I had a lot of time on my hands and thankfully I've built something that I am not only proud of, but I'm really thankful because I've made a lot of friends in Australia, but across the world. There's a lot of you out there that I really wanna thank and uh, I'll definitely mention you in the description below or in any way possible on social media for this episode and the entire channel that is because uh, not only have they motivated me, but they've also supported me over the time. And to be honest, I think when it comes to talking shirt, it's always a community thing. There's a lot of us out there talking about shirts or just anything to do with football culture. I love it. I love everything about football because not only is it a thing that connects us, but it's something that has you know, kept me connected to so many people. And uh, yeah, it kept us in a way healthy mentally. And yeah, so I just wanna say thank you to everyone for being a part of this community. Now, during this lockdown, I have spent a lot of money on kits that I've wanted. Kits that I don't want, and I am not sure why I bought those kits, but I think having a lot of these kits in my possession um, just added to my obsession with football shirts way before you know the pandemic. And I really have added a lot of shirts post uh, this channel and pre the channel I didn't really have many in a way that um, I do now uh, I'd love to talk about every kit that I have so it's definitely another episode for you out there I know there's been a few requests for a talk through of every kit but it's gonna be a long episode I have done of a few of those in the earlier times where I've spoken about my collection but I think the ones that are up here are a lot more special, so definitely we'll have to make an episode for you in that way. Today's episode is a bit of a special one. It's a massive thank you to you, the viewer, and yeah, everyone out there supporting this channel. A quick shout out to Kid and Bone for this amazing Man United Beckham Cup here. Don't know if it's gonna focus. But um, I'm really excited to talk about a few things that you've asked me, maybe even mention a few things about the channel. And yeah, let's just start off there. Basically, I wanna say I'm so sorry for saying the word exceptional. I'm also sorry for saying the word excellent or even magnificent or any silly word out there. I think um, elegant actually is one of the words I really need to uh, check the thesaurus and try and say something else because I say that word a lot. So if I've reviewed a shirt and I've said, uh, any of those words, please let me know. I'm trying my best to find new ways of describing or even explaining why I like that shirt, but I think those words need to go out of my uh, dictionary. Well, in a few episodes, I've described why I love collecting shirts. I have explained why I collect them. I think the short answer is uh, it's a piece of art. I think every shirt is unique. Now, during this whole you know process of this channel, I've been thankful enough to have a friend like Paul who has helped me out with Between Two Shirts. So again, a massive thank you to Paul with his little adventure with PFC. He's been able to collect his own sort of kits that he's wanted, but also produce and um, allow you to have the kits that you want. So if you are interested in any of his kits, please check out PFC and we'll definitely, we'll push for a two episode per month for Between Two Shirts next year. A bit more exciting because uh, we've always wanted to do this and I think finally we have the opportunity to do that. So look, I'll try my best to make it a podcast, but I think the YouTube format outdoors is exciting and I know a lot of people out there watch like uh, Poet and Booge, but um, yeah, it's something exciting for us. We really wanna get creative. So hopefully that comes out more often for you to watch. So again, a massive thank you to Paul for always being there supporting me. A quick and amazing shout out to Ultra Football for yeah, supplying me with some of the latest kits of 2020. And I'm really excited to yeah see what we can do in 2021. A lot of exciting things between us producing. I can't wait to show you what I've worked behind the scenes. And a quick now announcement that there is going to be a $100 giveaway for you, the viewers out there. So keep an eye on that on Instagram. I definitely will announce that for Christmas time. So that is $100 that you can put towards your favorite kit for this year or even any sales that are there because that's another episode I really want to create is like why you should wait to some of the kits prices going down. Well, while we're at it, let's get into the questions that you have asked me. I am really excited and also scared to answer some of these. Um, so how do we start this? I'll start on the first question here by the Wolverine. Would you rather capture a moment of technical brilliance or a shot of incredible emotion? 
I think we're just pretty lucky as photographers to be at that place at that time. So I'd be more happy of capturing anything that's sort of in the moment rather than something of technical brilliance. I think with the moment comes the technical brilliance that you'll basically be the, behind the camera. So you choose how you stand or how you sit or in that position, how you move around. So I think um, I definitely would go with the moment more. Best tip for photographing football shirts. Oh, I think this is something a lot of people have asked. And um, I would honestly say if you have a nice window, put the shirt on the wall and then on the other side, I'd have a reflector, something reflective, a bit of cardboard or polystyrene to allow the lighting to reflect on the other side so it's not too sort of one-sided. Otherwise, if you have a nice light or anything like that, try and get that directly onto the shirt. And if you have a window facing a wall like that, it's probably the best and you just try your best not to shoot with the sun behind you so you don't create a shadow. But again, there's no rules for that. What's my football story? That's a question by 3032 FC. Look, I've asked this a lot from people and I think my football story will probably be my favorite moments are always uh, in memory watching Champions League or just Manchester United games with my grandfather and my father in the mornings. Um, just before school, we used to wake up. I remember just Champions League on the on one of the worst TVs that we've ever had. And I think it was just that grateful moment of, uh, yeah, enjoying it with family. Um, that's probably my favorite story. There's many others of, you know, being in the moment, but I think that one plays true to me. And I think it's a bit more unique for myself. Uh, Cahill Express, uh, shout out to Cahill Express for being one of the world's best German shirt uh, collectors. She's asked, what was the first football match you ever shot professionally? I don't really remember, but I think professionally was an A-League game for Melbourne Heart. Can't remember who it was against, but um, I'm going to try and pronounce the Italian player's surname. It was during the John Aloisi coaching uh, era of Melbourne Heart, but it was uh, Ming Leo Rini, that Italian guy. I'm pretty sure I just screwed up his name, but uh, yeah, he scored a weldy and uh, he ran past me. And I think that was my first ever professional game. All right, so there's a bit of a kit question here. I know a lot of my questions have been photography so far. Uh, from Shuttersworth, shout out to my man in Canada. Least favorite kit of all time. Look, I need a bit of coffee for this one because I definitely have to explain my most hated kit. Um, let's see. My most hated kit, oh, you know what? I have a lot of my most hated kit. I honestly don't know right now on the top of my head, I wouldn't be able to uh, to say I actually don't hate many kits. Oh, I do have one. Everyone loves that Denmark kit, that Danish kit with the red and red. And I think Melbourne City tried copying that with the Nike era. That has to be my worst kit. I love the Bruce Banana. I love a lot of bad kits out there in, in a way that football, the community don't like certain kits. But I have to say that Danish kit, the two different red tonals, that's my by far my most hated kit. I'm not even gonna tell you why, I just hate it. I just think it's the worst kit possible. Okay, so I've got a question here, and this is a really controversial one. Thoughts on Pata and before the Vetermans slapping their logo on kits, creative, yes or no? This is from the Crazy Gang. Uh, look, I have had my say on the Pata collaboration. Um, I have had my say on the human race. I really should have done an episode. I may still do it just because I think a lot of people out there have stopped making a mockery of it. But I think the Pata collaboration isn't something that I really like because um, I love the kits. I think if I was to buy a kit and just have the totally different like sponsor on top of it with the not original branding or badge on it, it sort of defeats the purpose of buying something. It's almost like buying a Mustang with a, something like a, a Holden or a Mitsubishi badge on it. It just doesn't sort of play true to me. I'm not a huge fan of the Pata. The Pata is an amazing sort of brand in itself, but I think if I'm gonna spend the money, I'm definitely gonna buy something that will value. And look, it's gonna be something like the Bitcoin era and stuff where money goes up and down. I think jerseys will definitely lose interest in a couple of years and then come back up. So I don't think the Pata will have that sort of value over time. So that's why I stick true to my kits. And then you've got your, uh, your brands like Balenciaga and Vetermans just trying their best at making football shirts and charging 600. Look, if you have the money, spend what you want, buy what you want. I'm not gonna say don't spend your money. I'm just gonna say, look, is it really worth it? I think if you're someone like Hector Bellerin and you're really, like, you know, that damn good, good looking, I know a lot yeah. of us agree. But um, yeah, he can pull that off, definitely. But I'm not a huge fan of the Pata, more so because it's just a bit of a rip off in a sense of design. I think if Pata was to, to design their own, like what Palace does in their own 
sort of unique ways, then that's a bit more, you know, worth my money. And I love what Jordan's been doing and Nike with uh, PSG. So I'd love to see a lot of that. Again, the baller stuff that they've done with the recent teams, not a huge fan of that collaboration. I think the first sort of release has been really undervalued in a way of the design team. I think they've really let it down. And yeah, the human race, I have to say, um, a lot of people have been making that a joke with you know the whole crayons on white t-shirts. But um, I really think the human race designs have been, you know, if, if in any way upsetting to some, but I think it's made a lot of people think about where the football industry is going in design way. So that's what I like. That was a really, really long answer. Um, got another question here, let's see, from LA Victory FC. I love this gentleman here from um, Los Angeles. I'm hopefully, hopefully, because it's sort of like an LA FC, but um, he has asked, what would be the number one lesson to share to a young new football photographer? Uh, check out his page. He's got a lot of good sort of emotional and uh, motivational uh, pieces about football or anything around it. Look, my best lesson would be, or sort of advice would be, I think stay original, stay true to yourself. Don't try to mimic other people in the industry. Don't try and be someone else on Instagram. Stay away from presets, please, for the love of God, stay away from presets. I think, look, I, I use them for my edits, but don't just chuck an edit onto a photo and hope that that photo is gonna look amazing. Try your best to get your sort of style in camera first and then push the boundaries of the way you edit. I think the best advice would definitely be just be yourself in a way that others will value you. And remember, no matter how you know you shoot, someone's gonna like it, and then that's the brand that you're growing. So yeah, definitely be original. I've got a question here from Liam Ayres. Do you still have the photos from when you first ever started taking photos? Look, these are a lot of photo questions. We're definitely gonna have some quick questions coming up soon. Um, yeah, I don't think I've kept a lot of them, but um, anything special like Melbourne City or soccer is any like sort of big jobs or um, athlete wise, I definitely have kept, but anything from the past that I don't really value in a creative way, I definitely will put on a hard drive and just store it away. I've got a question here. If you didn't collect kits, what would you collect? Uh, comic books, definitely comic books, I think. I'm a bit of a nerd for that, so I definitely would collect uh, comic books. Any other football brands you recommend? All right, so I think when it comes to football jerseys, um, I'm really heavily focused on Nike and Adidas and sort of that era. I think Umbro in the sort of 80s, 90s era. I definitely would love to buy a little bit more of Hummel or you know, I think Puma in a sense of like the retro in sense. I think um, I have really enjoyed, one of my favorite kits would have to be the Sheffield Wednesday kit. I just love the way the Puma King is featured on that design. Oh yeah, and the thing that I love collecting as well from the other question is definitely football mugs. So that's something I really wanna try and connect more. And this is the 94 USA Mars. Um, my wife didn't like me buying these because she's like, you know this cup has been around since 1994. And um, yes, I have washed it. I would not wash, uh, drink uh, coffee or anything out of this cup if it wasn't washed. It's like, why would you wear a jersey if it's not washed as well? I've got a question here for favorite collar on a kit. I think this collar that I'm wearing right now, or even this one would definitely be my favorite collar on a kit. It's that, I think 2019 rendition um, that Nike did on a lot of their uh, away kits for their teams. But the PSG kit that I have here, that's probably my favorite collar. It's a bit more stylized and I love the sort of undercut. I think wearing this in a professional way would be the best fit. I think collars are great. Um, it shows the design elements of that shirt and how they're pushing boundaries. I think something I've really liked in the small details, as I say in every episode, is the small little cuts that Nike's done to their um, professional kits this season. You see it come in many different ways. You saw previous a little cut and this one's got a double layered uh, sort of cross cut there as well and it goes around. I think my prediction for 2021 kits would be a lot more emphasis or just detailed uh, cuffing and neckline. I think that's something they're gonna work on next season. What's your favorite kit of 2020? Um, okay, so my favorite kit that I like that's been released would definitely be would definitely have to be this one. Uh, this is the Vapor Knit as seen on that episode. 
Um, this is by far my favorite kit. I do want to collect both previous editions, but this kit here, the third kit for um, Nike's uh, Inter Milan kit has been my favorite. I think having Lukaku on the back again is something that I hopefully, uh, yeah, have done the right decision, but I love him as a footballer, so definitely this is my favorite kit of 2020. My worst kit for 2020, it's a bit of a hard one. I don't know, I honestly don't know what my worst one would be. What's a kit in your collection that you've never spoken about but would love to speak about? Definitely have one. I haven't really spoken much about this. I think I did a green episode or new collection, but I really love uh, this kit. I uh, barely wear it. It's hidden in the closet behind you, but um, there's a lot more kits that I have in my collection that I don't really wear, and I'm trying to change that and ethically. I think I need to start buying shirts that I'm gonna wear and stop buying shirts that are just gonna sit in cupboards. This collection here definitely gets worn or moved around and you know gets uh, a bit of light but i think this one here unfortunately hasn't had that so i definitely would love to give this a bit of light soon uh so short sleeve or long sleeve okay so good timing i recently got uh, my friend paul to buy and find me one of the best kits that i've wanted in sort of the long sleeve man united era and there's still one more in that collection that i have to add but it is this one it's got Bex on the back. I uh, yeah, can't say much about this right now, but I definitely, I'm just pleased to have a long sleeve Bex kit in my collection. I definitely will need to get a bit more. Um, I wouldn't mind uh, this one here with the Cantona on the back. This one doesn't really have a name, but this one, uh, if I had a Cantona, would be perfect. I think it was an anniversary recently of his uh, famous Kung Fu kit. What are some football culture brands or websites that you recommend us check out? Uh, okay, so this is a bit of a long one. I'm gonna try and find them on here. If I have forgotten you, please let me know. I definitely will give you a shout out. I love the community. I think there's a lot, the culture division, I love what they do. I think um, as a blog or even just information for what's new in the scene, definitely check out the culture division. I really love Derby Mag over in Canada. Check those two boys out, AK Activated and Shuttlesworth. One of my favorite Canadian sort of duos. I really love what they do for Canadian football. So definitely check out that if you want something of Alfonso Davies fan club, they should be changed their name to. Um, I am a huge fan of a lot of American sort of uh, creatives out there. So Daniel Coben, his episode will come out soon. Amazing creator at soccer.com. There's a lot more out there in that space. In Australia, I've got a lot of friends that are really sort of, um, really, uh, how can I say this, really, Happy to know and call a friend, but Park, Pass the Ball, Sam has been one of, if not the most creative and inspiring person that I know, so I have to show you this. But when it comes to football creators, I think Sam definitely is someone that's motivated me to push boundaries. And if you are willing to pass the ball and make kids smile this Christmas, definitely check out Park in the comments and description below. But uh, Non-football related, but a bit more loves football. Check out the Wolverine, a lovely photographer. He's modeled me uh, for me a few times, so definitely check out his work. I've got Cahill Express, again, one of the best creatives uh, in the German kit collecting scene, but all round legend. I've got TLL, the Ladies League. Again, definitely check their kit out with Kappa, uh, the best trio in the scene, and I look forward to seeing what they're gonna do next. The final third, one of the best socks creations. I don't have anything right here, but uh, yeah, definitely check out the work and hopefully the next 16 socks releases. So I love what he's been doing. Uh, Unwanted FC, I have to finish that episode. It's in my cupboard, but recycling materials and making something amazing from something you have to something you want. Definitely check out their work. The, the brothers out in uh, Brisbane and UK, one of the best duos in that scene. So definitely check out their work. Minos, uh, formerly VSSS, uh, yeah, can't wait to see what he's gonna create and thank you so much for a lot of my kits as well. Of course, Paul at PFC, again, not only is he one of my close mates, but he's pushing boundaries himself in the kit scene. Uh, then you've got Polyester FC. Look, if you're in Sydney, definitely check out Polyester FC. You've got Ultra Football, can't say too much about them because I mention them in every episode, but definitely, definitely one of the best sort of, uh, yeah, help I've ever had in 2020. Then we've got over in the UK, one of my favorite photographers is Matt McNulty from Man City. Definitely check out his work. So again, Matt, thank you so much for always uh, chatting with me during the lockdown. And then we've got Kitted Out Podcast. I don't know if you watched our two hour episode. Uh, definitely check out 
that episode. But um, but uh, yeah, look, uh, thank you so much, Oli, for being an inspirational person during the lockdown and yeah, creating some amazing sort of chats over the time. But check out his chat with uh, Inter Miami's uh, Kitman recently. Uh, then we've got Alice Patton at Away Days. I'm not gonna describe his channel too much because it's definitely something for you to check out. I'm just gonna let you know there's a lot of uh, yeah, amazing scenes in the Away Day scene, so check out his work. And look, finally, I'm gonna forget a lot of people. We've got Colt Kits. Can't say too much because you already know why I love them. And finally, and last but not least, uh, yeah, uh, False Nine. Again, there's something that I'm gonna be working on with him, but the False Nine, uh, <laughs> Not only did he buy me the, one of the best football jerseys in African sort of history, but uh, yeah, check out his work. And I look forward to when he moves back to Melbourne and Australia soon to yeah, get creative before he goes back to the UK. So this is definitely gonna be a long episode. So again, thank you so much if you are still watching. I may just throw a few more questions in my head that I wanna answer for you. But I think this episode was just a bit more of a thank you to you uh, for watching this channel. And yeah, just supporting me. I just, I never thought that I would be making YouTube videos. I know they're not really of quality in a way of many other YouTubers, but I'm still growing. I've moved from my back room to this room now that we're having a little baby coming on the way. So I'm really excited to sort of buy football kits for her when she's growing up. And uh, yeah, spend a lot more money on football jerseys as an excuse. But I think, look, I just wanna say a massive thank you again. There's, uh, there's only 357 of you as of today, but I want to sort of make this happen in a way that will give someone else an opportunity in the creative scene. But look, I'm really excited to, yeah, just talk sure, get creative, and hopefully push the boundaries for myself and you out there. Of course, there's a lot of uh, comments in my videos lately, and I have to say a massive thank you to them. Basically, when I get a comment or anything, notifications go straight to my phone. So I see all your questions, all your likes, all your comments. So everything, everything, it means so much to me. And I think one individual, uh, I have to find his name because I definitely know he's gonna watch. He's known as ER on, um, on YouTube, but he does a lot of uh, sort of questions and yeah, just loves to comment on all of my uh, video so thank you to the gentleman known as ER I don't know who you are but thank you so much for watching my videos and I think this episode is dedicated to the people out there even the silent ones who don't leave comments I think just yeah when I see the views I still can't believe one of my PSG episodes hit about 1500 and look if I do get monetized it will definitely help me push the uh, boundaries of the channel and I really want to sort of do something a bit more exciting. Um, there is stuff that I'm recording behind the scenes that I want to share in 2021, but yeah, look, it's a great start. My goal is to hopefully hit 500 by the end of the year, but I'm definitely doing a little bit of a giveaway. I'm not gonna announce it here. I wanna say go visit my Instagram when you can. It will go live anytime soon before Christmas. I think one of my, uh, what would you call it? My regretful buyers of 2020? Again, would, would probably be this one. I really liked the kit when it came out. I still liked it, don't get me wrong. But I think I rushed on buying it. I got the Harland name on the back. But I could have waited a couple of months or even a week and got a bit of a discount. But I spent 200 Australian dollars on this. So future episodes will be a bit more educational. So maybe like this is basically based on the episode that I recorded called Should I Buy It? Should I Not? Basically, don't rush on new kits because there's nothing that's going to sell out these days. Nothing like the Nigeria kit of 2018. And saying that, you know, if you have an opportunity, go check Nike.com because this kit hasn't even sold out yet. I didn't make a video about it because I thought there's going to be a lot of mess online. I didn't want to put my two cents towards it. But look, again, it's a beautiful kit and it hasn't sold out. So I think something that I've learned in 2020 about collecting kits is that there's no need to rush. You're gonna buy a kit, if it sells out, there's always gonna be many versions of it out there. I think spend your money wisely on kits of the past, something that hasn't been, you know, sort of released in many time. And with that being said, like, you know, it's kits like this, I would rather spend $200 on, Alianza Lima. Again, it's just kits like this that I would rather spend all my hard-earned cash on than anything brand new. Um, again, you, you can buy brand new kits, but I think it's more so not rushing in buying them because there's gonna be many of them out there. I will do a tour of my collection as said earlier. I don't know what else to add to this episode. I think the best thing it is, is just I'm opening up and saying hello. It's gonna be a bit of a weird episode, so hopefully you've enjoyed it. Massive shout out to my wife again for supporting me with this channel, allowing me to buy kits nonetheless. And of course, she's bought me something for Christmas, so hopefully we can make an episode about that if she's gone above the bank. 
But look guys, I uh, just wanna say again, thank you so much for supporting this channel. If you can, please share it, please give it a like, please yeah, help me reach 500 before the end of 2020. 2021 is looking really exciting. I am um, gonna try my best to do everything that I promised in this episode. And who knows, you know, 12 months from now, we may be in a different position and uh, I'm just really thankful. So please stay safe, stay away from stupid people as always. And I definitely will see you in the next episode. Thank you and goodbye.